on guys? We are here at the 2019 IPCPR, hanging out with Alec and Bradley of yeah. Alec Bradley Cigars. And guys, so we're, we're totally chill. This is completely off the cuff. Welcome to stylezepper.com. Um, we're just kind of hanging out. We're just kind of hanging out with this right now. We're having a great time. So as we're kind of making a mess here, but that's okay. I'm gonna totally edit the living hell out of this. Um, but guys, um, so you guys totally have been helping me out so much. Photo bomb. We have uh, totally been helping me out a whole lot with the uh, with the website and everything. And as things are going forward with everything, my big thing is breaking stigmas. And we're all pretty young. Um, that's Bradley, that's Alec, yes. um, namesakes, but that's already been uh, of Alec Bradley, he's the founder. Um, what do you guys, and I'm gonna kinda turn this a little bit better for you guys, yes. in terms of our age groups and everything that goes into it, and technically we're all, we're all kind of quantified as millennials, but there's a lot of work and a lot of hustle that goes into this. Um, I just smoked one of your cigars, and you guys with the development of your own portfolio and everything else, what goes into it, and what would you tell people who have all these like preconceived notions about cigar smoking in general? So the reason that we love the cigar industry is not just because of the tobacco. It also is just a great community, and I think that's really a big reason why that Brad and I both fell in love with the industry. We both are, you know, both big cigar smokers. But aside from that, we love we just love the camaraderie of the uh, of the entire industry. And if you walk into a cigar shop and sit down, you, you might not know anyone, but, but by the time you leave, you'll have friends, you'll be able to talk to people. Like, it's just a really cool, tight community, and cigars bring people together. And that's what's super cool about it and very exciting for us is, you know, we were very, both very young coming into this industry. Both started when we were in our early 20s, and well, Brad's still in his early 20s. But, um, but yeah, mid, mid I, I think I'm mid twenties now, right? I'm, the, well, I'm mid twenties. You finished fours. You finished drivers. You finished drivers ed. Yes. Um, that's that's all that you matters. You can't. You still can't I, rent I'm a car, the, so, so I'm gonna call you early twenties. Am I the curse on here? Fuck yeah. You're a dick. <laughs> I'm gonna get banned from from out from IPCPR and everything else, but that's okay though. I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm the coolest guy here. Um, you're a dick too, by the way. Um, but <laughs> put reciprocation is the most polite form of flattery. Um, <laughs> When people will say things, because again, my big thing, and that's going to be like the big uh, theme with all of this, is going to be, you know, oh, cigars smell bad. They're like my grandpa used to smell them, and they do this and they do that. But there's there's a reason for all that. Yeah. Like the phrase deep diving now with everything has such has such a bigger meaning now. If you know why things are the way they are, and flavors, and these are not infused. And when you're talking like, there's such a science that goes into it. And, and art. Yeah, exactly. And there's an art to it. When you're developing that, and especially at your age, how much work and how long does that take? Well, uh, do you want to answer this? Yeah, so it's <laughs> actually it was going to be kind of my answer for yeah. the last question. Yeah. It's the same for this question. Yeah. It's the time. Yeah. The time that it takes for every aspect of cigars is the most important part. So between the growing, having the availability of the tobacco, aging the tobacco, fermenting the tobacco, and the tobacco is finally is ready. Let's start working on blends, okay? Well, we just use all this tobacco just for blends. Maybe we didn't find something, and now we're on to new blends, new tobacco, and then finally get down to the blend. Okay, we pick the blend. Now we got to design the cigar bands. What are we going to look like in our blend? And we don't know because we got to design it, and we got to smoke it, and is it all coming together? Cohesively. And then you finally get the cigar, and people may want to pick a couple puffs. I don't really like it, put it out. Well, how much time was put into making this one cigar? Years. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and it's like, and there's, again, like, there's a reason for everything. So I was in Ybor City. It's, it's kind of like Bourbon Street, only trashy. And it's really nice, I'll be honest. Uh, it's a great place. The fact that there's all these cigar boutiques and they're hand rolled. And having fresh cigars is a really cool thing, but you don't necessarily want a fresh cigar. No, no, and absolutely not. Unless you're out of weather. Right, and, it, and there's, so there's a reason for everything. So um, you guys, again, like it wasn't necessarily about the promotion of it because that's gonna happen in due time. Um, I just had a, a magic toast, but before that you guys gifted me a blind faith. That was your first. And so now, how cool is that to say it was your first, and yeah. now you have a second one? Mm -hmm. And usually sequels, especially in 2019, suck. Yeah. Or, or it's a reboot. So congratulations, you guys don't have anything to reboot yet. So we don't suck. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. uh, we don't suck. As you're uh, with Alan starting the company, and now you're you're doing your own, you're building your own resume. 
or is the French called You're Les Hommes? Uh, you're what the French call Les Incompetents. Uh, how does that make you feel knowing you've already, like, you can, when I tell my friends, step one is making the first step, step yeah. two is now looking back and seeing how far you've already gone. How does it make you feel now? Go for it, man. So, I'm a firm believer in sports that if you have a great rookie season, you're gonna have sophomore slump. Fairly firm believer in that yeah. there's a science. Yeah. Not really, but it's what I believe. Um, Which the White Sox would learn that. But. <laughs> I don't know if we'll be going through the sophomore slump. We yet to see. Um, but I can say that I like, I do really like Gatekeeper more than I like my favorite. It's just it fits me. I think and the the responses this past you know day or two have been unbelievable. I mean we had four boxes and samples on top of that last night and all of the boxes. People just started grabbing at it. Which oh yeah, they were not mine, mine is still in my they, bag, but I'm like I'm saving it for a special occasion. I'm, 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 I'm actually the opposite. I actually really enjoy blind fade. Yeah. But I mean there's something for everyone's palate, and that's what is so different about me and Brad working on these cigars together is that we have to find something that we both like. Yeah. Which is hard. Yeah. We do have similar palettes, but we do like different things. Yeah. Yeah. He's smiling because it's, it's a process. I'm, I'm also smiling because these two goofballs uh, were staring at me, making faces. Okay. Yeah, you know what? They're they're jealous because I'm going to be dressing you. But, uh, yeah, these guys are going to be helping me make a special announcement a little bit later. I wore a nice jacket, but um, in terms of the inspiration of going forward, and again, like for our age group and everything else, what would you just tell somebody who they're thinking about dabbling in it? but they don't know, and people will say things like, oh, well, you know, you want the, a shorter cigar, or you want this, this wrapper color. Easy. But that's such a tip of the iceberg so, for what cigars really are. Yeah, what would for you say me, to someone who's thinking about explore it? Explore your palate. Explore it. Smoke everything, try everything. Don't let someone tell you this is the best cigar, this is the one that you have to smoke, and then stick with it. Smoke everything. When I came, when I started smoking, um, I used to just basically help at a shop, and they would unban cigars for me, have me smoke them, and give me the ban later tell me what it was to see if I liked it or not. And that's how I just built up my palate, explored my palate, and Brad went through a similar thing when he started smoking as yeah. well. And I want to say something pretty much almost the exact same thing, but it's a little bit different. Don't let anyone tell you that you're smoking a bad cigar. Don't let anyone tell you that, oh, what you're smoking is shitty. Uh, there, there, there are, yeah, there are yeah. cigars for everyone. What yeah. I what I like is maybe not what you like. And yeah. you know, you may smoke something, and I might think that it sucks, and because it probably does. But yeah. If you like it, that's all that matters. It sure, doesn't totally. matter what I think. So. Totally, totally. Um, that makes sense. Um, IBCPR is pretty much all for like the retail sales end of it and uh, going to your local. Um, how, is everything available now? Is everything shipping now? And can folks find it? Is it alecbradley.com, I think? It's, everybody always says at the end, at, you know, like what the website is. Is everything available now? Retailer online. We're so we actually don't sell directly on our website, okay. but you can if you want any, any, any My information swag on our website. Yes, <laughs> if you want any information about the cigars, it's there. But they're um, light, your lighters are the shit, and then the super like a mega burner. Yeah, check that guy out. Yeah, that's the mega burner. See, that's yeah. I would take this thing camping with me, and I would it's I would empty. cook him. Yeah, I would cook a meal over it. Okay, we'll, we'll edit that, or I'll I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do an After Effects on it too. Um, so much cool stuff in of there. Of course, I get it on the first try. There you go. <laughs> Bam. It's in a poor man's high definition. That's cool, though. Nobody cheaping out and do standard definition anymore. We're all about the 4K now. Um, <laughs> guys, I just want to make this super, super short, uh, super quick uh, quality, not quantity. That's what I'm all about. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Uh, guys, thank check you. them on out. This is the Alec and Bradley. Thanks for having Alec us. Uh, and just... Uh, we're living true out here in Vegas. Um, I would move, I would totally move out here in a heartbeat. No, uh, great place, kind of um, wonderful people. Uh, take a look when you can, AlecBradley.com, and then find it at your local retailer. Yo. Thanks, guys.
point to make to consumers. The butane tank lasts about 30 days roughly and it is not refillable, which is awesome. That saves a lot of time and money for retailers. And you just pop it back in. It does work with other lighters. And then you can adjust the flame height as well. So you can make it higher or you can make it lower. If it's colder out, you can make it a little bit higher. Um, you can also change the angle of the BCU. The BCU is replaceable on these guys. For the Mirage, all you do is pop it out right here. For this one, you would just twist it off. And when you buy the lighter itself, you do get two BCU units with them. Nice, nice. And you guys had the cigars too also, so perfect yes. pairing. Yes. Come on over to Bugatti. Awesome. Thank you. Guys, we're back at IBCPR 2019. You might know this guy. He's pretty popular in the industry, Mr. Rocky Pateau. Rocky, thank you so much for being on Styles. Everywhere. My pleasure. Welcome to Las Vegas 2019. Awesome. It's uh, it's only like a mild 92 degrees outside, but we're making it work pretty well. Yeah, of course, uh, pretty well here. Rocky, huge fan of yours. You're a, an absolute icon of the business. We appreciate you so much. Um, with my age group and going forward with everything, um, speaking on the art that is cigar making. What would you tell somebody um, when you want to go really nitpick basic about what cigars are, what it means to you, aromas, blending? What would you tell someone walking into a cigar uh, lounge for the first time? Well, you know, the art form of cigars is transcended over generations, and literally it's a cottage industry that's a, a craft that takes a lot of time passion, patience, and skill to make. By the time we plant the seedling in the ground, time to get a cigar in the box, it takes four to five years, 300 different hands to touch the tobacco, it's a labor of love. So uh, it's unlike most products out there in the marketplace. It's very unique, much like a single malt scotch, a fine aged wine, uh, you know, we enjoy it like a luxury product. Uh, it really, the aromas, uh, the, the taste profiles, it, it elevates all the senses that you have. And you can certainly enjoy it uh, with a great glass of rum or single malt scotch. Uh, it's absolutely great after a meal, or if you just want to relax and daydream and collect your thoughts and meditate, or you can have conversation with folks about life, politics, sports, it brings people together. It does tend to drop your blood pressure by about three or four points. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just talking about mentioning that with you on Christoph. It's kind of like I always tell people it's like dry aging beef. Absolutely. The tobacco is a plant, it was still alive, it still is. It's it's the art of aging it, what goes with what, blend, you know, the blends, a good, you know, like a red wine, like you mentioned, what goes with it. Um, you've been doing this for more than, you know, this is, this is you, this is your life. That's uh, right. When folks kind of have these slightly more, dare I say, shallow perspectives, what do you want to say when you think about the kind of work that goes into it? Well, you know, it's unlike any other tobacco product. Uh, I mean, in the case of our cigars, many of them, the tobaccos age 8, 10, 11, 12 years. Uh, that's how long you're taking and fermenting the tobacco, curing the tobacco, working with the tobacco on a daily basis. It, it's so much labor intensive. Uh, there's so much work that goes into making a great quality cigar. But it's something to be enjoyed. It's not a habit. It's something you enjoy the skill. You enjoy the taste, you enjoy the smells, the aromas of the cigar. So uh, you should absolutely try it. Go get a nice steak, come back to your favorite place, light up a cigar. You could start with something creamy, mild, smooth, and work your palate up. It's just like whether you want a Pinot Grigio, or you want a Cabernet, or you want a Barolo. Same thing with cigars. We have so many different flavor profiles, so many different taste profiles. They feel unique, you can get a round one, you can get a box press one, you can get different sizes from a Corona to a Torpedo, so try the experience. Trust me, when I started, I wasn't, I never smoked a cigarette in my life, uh, you know, and I just started smoking cigars and just enjoyed the whole culture and experience of it all. And not to mention experience, you're a destination. You, uh, you've got your cigar lounges. Congra Absolutely. Congratulations on those. Thank you, thank you. Do you have one in Pittsburgh, I think? We have one in Naples, Florida, one in Pittsburgh. We have one in Atlanta, one in Oklahoma City, and just getting ready to open one in uh, Indianapolis. My boss uh, back home, hey, uh, she lives in Pittsburgh, or awesome. she, she's from Pittsburgh, and she was like, oh, if I'm ever back home, like, do you know what, I got Rocky? He's a boxer? No, 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 totally different, totally different guy, no, no, no. But uh, congratulations on that. So it's not only a matter of going to your local tobacconist. 
if you you know look you up online, head over to your lounge. That's right, it's called yeah. Burn by Rocky Patel. Check it out. I promise you it's gonna be the sexiest lounge you've ever been to and enjoy hey, hey. Rocky, thank you so much My for your pleasure. time. Thank yeah, you for being a boy Styles Ever, right. guys. We're carrying on after this. What's going on guys? We are back, Styles Ever at 2019 IPCPR in fabulous Las Vegas. It's alright. I'm here with Mr. Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. Glenn, thank you so much for being with me on the Styles Effort. Brother, it's great to be here. Thanks for having us. This is this is great. Not a worry, absolutely. Um, so the theme of everything today, um, we're, we're breaking stigmas. There's a lot of folks out there, especially when you're younger. Um, I am tragically kind of adopted into that millennial category. And while the stigma luckily is changing as far as the attraction of premium cigars, um, from what I know, you actually have an interesting history of how you came up with the name of the, of the company also. Absolutely. Um, what was the inspiration behind that, and what is Christoph? So Christoph is actually named after our son Christopher, right? So I spent 19 years in financial services and corporate. The last nine years of my career, I was an executive at one of the top three banks in the country, and I just got burnt off in the politics, the bureaucracy, all the nonsense, and decided to pursue a passion, which is this. So, uh, yeah, so when I first started the company, nothing I made was called Christoph for the first year. And the first Christoph we came out with, again, which is named after our son Christopher, who's working on his PhD in, uh, at FIT or MIT uh, right now. So, um, yeah, so the first Christoph, really, when we got on the market, it put us on the map, and everything after that became Christoph, and then we finally rebranded the company to Christoph. And so we're here we are now, Almost 15 years later. Yeah, Time awesome. flies. <laughs> You're like I said, home team. We're from Illinois, um, yep. Warrenville, I think. Warrenville's my office. Yes. Um, so not too too far from the inner city. Great smoking regulations and the taxes yeah. are wonderful. Oh, yeah, so you're killing me, Smalls. I know. Tell me about <laughs> it. But uh, and don't worry, when he gets that PhD and he accrues his vast millions, he's going to pay you back every cent of every dime. You know, I'm sure. I'm you're, sure. You'll have a nice retirement because you're not very busy. Nothing's. You don't have much else going no, on, which nothing. is awesome. So. How old were you when you had your first cigar? I was 16. Me too. What, did right? you, what was yours? Oh, it was Swisher Sweets at Harold's <laughs> Pool Hall. It's backwoods. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, okay. 7 if, if 7 Eleven had a cigar aficionado, it was in 7 Eleven's top 10 list. Right, exactly. Like, it, was, it was what it was. What, what made you want to try it? Was it just a thing to do? Was it cool? Did it smell good? It was or? just kind of a cool thing to do. We'd hang out at a place called Harold's Pool Hall, shooting pool, drinking coke, and smoking our swisher seats. It was just like a thing we yeah, did. Yeah, for sure. So. Did you ever do hookah? I have. Yeah, that itch? yeah, yeah. It's, we, we've all upped our game, luckily, so that's exactly. a good thing. When you, when the kids, because there's, uh, I had asked about the Britannia, because I believe it's named after the, 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 the daughter. The daughter. Yep. What did they think about it? Like when they got two of age, like did they try it? Did they think it was gross? Did they think, like, what did they feel about it? So my daughter doesn't smoke cigars. Okay. Our son Chris is one of my testers. So when I blend a new cigar, Bingo. he's my tester. I'm like, hey, bud, tell me what you think. Is he on the payroll? It, no. <laughs> and he wants nothing to do with the business except when he's, you know, I'll get a text from him and say, hey, I need some more cigars. So yeah. Send it off to school. So totally, totally. So was there a point where he questioned it, or because it's as I said, we're getting. I'm 32. God damn. Um, <laughs> there's cursing a lot, by the way. Um, like I'm 32, and for the younger people who like they might have the stigma. It's like South Park. People will say like, oh, it's smut, it's cursing, it's kids, and all that. You know what? There's a reason it's been on TV for over 20 years. Right. They have all these awards for television, the musicals, there's more to it. So it's a shallow observation in my mind when you think like, you know, it stinks. It's like what my grandpa used to do and da 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 da. You know what? I bet your grandpa was a classy guy and I bet you love him. I bet you miss him, whatever. Absolutely. Um, my grandpa did, unfortunately, camels, but that was a he was a crew chief in World War II. It was what it is. Got it. What do you think of when people will say that after all the work and basically the science that goes into cigar smoking and, and developing them? Right. Well, you know, frankly, the, the cigar industry, those that appreciate a good cigar, it's a social event, right? So you're sitting one-on-one -on -one or with a group of people, and I call this the equalizer, right? So I don't care what you do for a living, how much you make, this brings everyone together. Yeah. And it's, it's time to relax and kind of regroup. You could be having the worst day ever, after about a half hour, 45 minutes of cigar, everything's good. You can feel your blood pressure drop dropping point absolutely. by point. Like if you get tested for a life policy, right. they're gonna tell you like, Mr. Quinn, like how did you do that? Be like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you can't do anything within 24 hours. I think that's the thing. We never touched it, but you know, you right. never know. Um, 
and even then, just for greater perspective, let's say uh, regulations being one thing right now, when you're developing a brand, if you decide on one, if you had to give an abridged version, how long and how much work would it does it take to go into a new cigar? Right, no, that's a great question. So the blending process, it's an art. There's no science to it. So it's all what I sort of personally like, and I just hope that the market likes it, right? So I blended cigars literally in two days. Or Sumatra, it took me two days to blend it, and no one smoked it, and I said, I don't care if it doesn't sell, I'll smoke them all. Fortunately, it's done really well. Once it's blended, it takes about six to eight months to get to market. Okay. So the cigar has to be going to production, then it has to sit in the aging room anywhere from exactly. three to six months, right? When, when a lot of folks, so if you ever think like, oh, like this place, there's a, it's a fresh cigar. You don't want to smoke a fresh cigar. No. That's, that's not the way it works. So right. it's a time, it's like if you like dry aged steak, there's a process of the madness with the tobacco. It's, a, right. it's a still a living thing, so there is there is that art to it and understanding that. Absolutely. And other times, it, you know, it might take me three to six months to finalize a blind because I just haven't found the right recipe, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then it takes time. You know, you have to understand, even before we make the cigar, the tobacco has been aging from anywhere from a year to three years. Yeah. So then we make it. And then it has to go through that aging process to ensure that the wrapper, the binder, and the filler all marry together over time. Yeah. And depending on the blend, sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it's a little short. So it's a process and we don't want to rush it, right? Yeah. So we don't want to put something out on the market that's not ready to smoke now. Yeah. yeah. One of the big things that I think a lot of people on YouTube or online in general will say to people is like when they walk into like a tobacconist, they'll say, you know, shop for something with a, they want to go with it's the stereotypes if you will like a lighter a lighter wrapper means this a shorter cigar means this mm -hmm. there's a lot to that which i think is inaccurate absolutely um what would you tell someone if if they're if i'm taking somebody to casa de monte cristo back home in chicago sure. um Benny's, whatever and you said like what do you what do you want what do you think what would you tell someone even before all that because it's a tip of the iceberg right no exactly so there's a couple of things uh, some of the misconceptions are the darker the wrapper the stronger the cigar has nothing to do with that and this is a longer conversation but it's really yeah. how much is the hero is in the filler viso and then sabo that's what drives the strength the wrapper is what drives the flavor so I, a lot of times i ask people you know what do you like to smell and if they're not sure I'll ask questions like, what do you like to eat? What do you like to drink? Do you like spicy food? Do you like milder foods? And we can kind of drive them that direction. And of course, I uh, describe the flavor notes of the cigar. Um, do you like coffee? Do you like cocoa? Do you like spice? It's kind of a cedar note, sweet, peppery. And that will also help drive what I recommend for a cigar. Totally. And it does take time. You know, there's strength over flavor. There's flavor over strength. There's you know, what do I typically smoke when I go to my barbecue place and I get the three pulled pork sliders? Right. I have a beer with it. Like, what, what complements that? Do you, what's sweet, what's bitter, what's mild? And these are all things that take time. Absolutely. And there's no, it's kind of like with, with clothing, for example. Fortunately, in clothing, uh, there's no right or wrong answer. There's just different right ones. Right. Exactly. Awesome. Um, we're going to wind it down. What's going on with you? What's going on with Kristoff? Where can people find you? Yeah, uh, so we're uh, all over the, the U.S. We're in 32 other countries outside the U.S. Swank. Uh, growing, thank God, right, still. Uh, faster than the market, which is always a good thing. Uh, so we're constantly looking at expanding markets, uh, expanding penetration of existing markets, and coming up with new and innovative blends. So For sure. Keeping it. And then we'll top it off with, um, this is Style Zephyr, and uh, I'm known as, like, this guy who likes dressing nice and whatnot. On a perfect day, when it comes to cigar and you're having your own good thing, what shoes are you wearing? Not, a, a lot of folks are like, they're ready for like, what cigar are you smoking? What shoes are you wearing? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm not even sure what I'm wearing right now. No, I don't okay. know. Yeah, it's okay. Johnson Murphy, Cole Haan, I have no idea. Whatever. Just hey, good quality shoes. J&M, I'm a model right here. There we go. Guys. Ashton Gray. Oh, it's hey, yeah, for sure. Cole Han, I got my Cole Hans on right now. I need it from the floor. Yeah, exactly. We're getting older. It's the back. The, <laughs> knees, right. the, the knees are the first to go. <laughs> Guys, check it out. Christoph, we're here with Glenn Case, IPCPR 2019. Stay styled. Thank you, Kevin. You rock. Hey. All right, guys, we're coming back to you at uh, 2019 IPCPR Vegas. Here with Sammy from La Polina. 
Uh, What's going on, guys? You're you're your yeah. boss man, right? Like you're the godfather, pretty much of. This setup. What's your? I am. Uh, I am what's your? Team. What's your title? What is your? Because your your figure. You guys are around like a quarter of a million dollars a year just in your suit here alone. <laughs> so, uh, what is your official working title? And then, where do you kind of like? What's your background wise? So, I am the uh, the president of La Palina Cigar Company, and. Um, I have uh, two business partners, uh, Mr. Bill Paley, who's the primary owner of the business, and then my business partner, Clay Roberts, who's my counterpart in the business. Okay, so um, in other words, he knows a little bit about cigars, which is phenomenal. Um, my big goal for this, uh, because there's a lot of cigars that uh, a lot of cigars that are on the market right now, um, they're great, the blends, everything are just, you know, tip of the iceberg. I'm 32 years old. A lot of people that are smoking right now, they're smoking because I might make it look cool on Instagram. So, which is great, and I want that. We want, you know, it's a younger generation. It's kind of like investing in a business. When you want a younger clientele, you want a younger staff, you want younger talent, the whole nine yards. In your personal opinion, like I said, it starts off with, you know, what do you want in a cigar? Why would you? What, what kind of like, first thing first, what got you smoking cigars? It's a it's a it's a longer story, but <laughs> my father came home when I was very young, and he had I'd say about that much of a cigar. It's our La Palina Classic Rosado, by the way, uh, rated 91 points cigar for Um But he came home, and he had the ass end of a cigar. And I had never smoked anything in my life at that point. You guys can read the read between the lines as you will. Yep. And he said, smoke the cigar. And I was like, no. And he used some beep word and said, don't be a beep. <laughs> and I smoked the cigar. And I, I literally, I fell in love. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I was not at that time of legal smoking age. So as I grew and, and I got into it, I wanted to learn everything that I could possibly about cigars. I was very attracted to it. I was attracted to it for a multitude of reasons. Number one, men in general have a, t a really tough time chilling out, calming down. You know, women, not so much. I don't, I don't think they're as high strung as, as we are. But for guys, it's hard to, to chill out. You know, you go to the gym, you pump iron. Um, we don't have as many outlets. Cigar smoking is a meditative state. And for smoking in general, right? Like if you smoke a cigarette, you're smoking a cigarette because you're getting that nicotine buzz. It's not like that with a cigar. A cigar is about camaraderie. It's the conduit to a good time, to a great time, where men can sit around, share their feelings, share their thoughts, and experience something. You can't hurry up and smoke a cigar. You've got to calm down and smoke a cigar. So to answer your question, right? What am I looking for in a cigar? What are people looking for in a cigar? It's all personal preference. Do you drink white wine? Do you drink red wine? You, if you're drinking beer, is it a light beer? Is it a fuller-bodied beer? Yeah. Are you, is it an IPA? Yeah. So for us, we try to we tend to, to blend to create steps in, in our program. So if you're looking for a milder, creamier cigar, you'd smoke our, our classic Connecticut. If you're looking for something a little more full-bodied than that, I'd put you into the La Palina red label, black label, bronze label, blue label, and then depending on what you're eating, what you're drinking for that evening, would also change. Yeah, gotcha. Um, that's a great point to illustrate, and what I would add to that too, um, there's comedians in cars getting coffee with Jerry Seinfeld, and I love kind of like the analogy that he used, where he made the point of saying, um, Jerry and uh, Larry David sat down and they said, what's the difference between cigarettes and cigars? And I think it was Larry who came up with the idea that cigarettes, you're rushed, you're stressed, whereas cigars, you know, they're contemplative, they're mellowing. It's, my, my blood pressure has at least dropped by about three points while I've been here. Right. And, um, and hopefully this microphone is good enough that my blood pressure will rise another three points when I go to edit this. Um, but, yeah, it is that chillax, it's that release, um, and you, you, I'm glad you mentioned men, because again, my theme is going to be breaking stigmas. When it comes down to deep diving and why things are, because you know, like folks will say like they smell, or they're this, or they're gross, or like your grandfather smoked it, it's kind of like wearing like a vintage suit and saying like, oh, like that's something my grandpa would wear, and I would say, you know what, I love my grandpa, and he dressed like a dapper guy, so I have no quarrel with that. When it comes to like the experience of it, what would you tell someone to just saying, being open-minded to it and justifying it? I mean, it's a great question. Let me let me start here. First of all, throwback is back, right? 
You go in, old classic, beautiful cocktails, mixologist, slow down, chill out, craft yeah. is key. So when I'm looking at somebody who wants to experience something different, who wants to experience something new, there are a lot of people out there who are extraordinarily anti-tobacco. Cigar smoking represents the good life. It has always represented the good life, and, and I think that it always will represent the good life. Yeah. And so, if you're open to new experiences, make sure you're with the right people, and make sure you pick up a premium hand-rolled cigar. Yeah. And I'm an advocate for this industry, for the premium cigar industry. Try something new. Try something new. Um, for the people who think a cigar is uh, stinky and or <laughs> smelly, yeah. um, there's certainly a different aroma. Yeah. I mean, if we went into a restaurant, there could be something that, that was off-putting. If you're smoking a premium hand-rolled cigar or you're exposed to a premium hand-rolled product, of course there's a certain je ne sais quoi smell to yeah. that product. My wife smokes cigars, I smoke cigars. The, the, female, the female population community within the premium cigar business has, has risen. And I'd say give it a shot, man. Yeah. Just give it a shot. You got nothing to lose. And I mean, and that's there's a building block to everything. You're when you do a deep dive on these things. Why does it have that smell? What is the aroma? What causes it? Because again, and it's we're gonna beat a dead horse with this, but it's an art and it's a science. It's why what a blend is, and even like why brands are. I always tell people, well, Ford makes the Explorer. Ford makes the Edge. They make like my beloved Edge. They make the Fusion. You know why you like what you like in that car. Sure. It's not much different. And being open-minded to what those different ingredients are and then experiencing it and mellowing out at the same time. By the time, you, you, when you said art form, you're really right about that. I mean, you're hitting the nail on the head. And this is, the premium cigar category, cigars in general, are archaic. I mean, we've been doing this since Christopher Columbus, before Christopher Columbus, Aztecians, we've, we've got proof that Aztecians were smoking cigars. You know, when you when you look at Native Americans, also smoking cigars. So, by the time you put a seed in the ground, by the time you put a cigar in a box, it's four to five years. 300 different hands touch the tobacco along the way. This is a, again, representative of the good life. Give it a shot. We won't Absolutely. let you down. Absolutely. Um, we're gonna wind this down. It's about quality over quantity, um, but just as good. And like I said, all the promotions, uh, La Polina, and this was the Connecticut, right? Yes. Gotcha, I'm more of a mild guy, and I know which is kind of you know mood dependent, so this is phenomenal. Um, I'm enjoying my Stella very much. Thank you again for that. It is our pleasure. Um, if folks want to experiment, they want to dabble, they want to open up their horizons, and they want to try a La Polina, what's, what's the best option to find you? We're all over the place. Uh, you can you can find us in almost every brick and mortar store across the country, uh, in Chicago in general, because I know you're a Chicagoan. Yeah. You can find us over at Iwan Reeves, my good friend uh, Kevin Levy. Oh, yeah. You can go down the store to my other good friends, Ma uh, Phil and Joel, who own Up Down, okay. and uh, you can go across the way to the beautiful Biggs Mansion. Find us there as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Guys, with Kevin, Style Zephyr, on to the next, coming from La Polina. Take care, stay tuned. Peace. Hey. What's up, guys? We're almost out of here on IPCPR 2019. Got another really special interview. Uh, we're hanging out, living true, but with another personality to the mix, Mr. Lars Tetons. Lars, thank you very much, and welcome aboard the Styles. Thank Zephyr. you, baby. We're uh, we're checking out some stories and some new philosophies right now. Again, we're just continuing out with the stories. Um, Lars, you're you're like um, you're like the prohibition of cigars, like this back of the room badass with these crazy philosophies and like the artistry, the leather works. We got some crazy awesome products here. I got a great gift on some spices from the other night. Thank you so much. All kinds of really awesome stuff that's going on. Uh, the seesaw, the leather goods, um, the whole nine yards. So really uniqueness in the personality. But let's backtrack because there's gonna be a point to this whole charade. When did you start on cigars and why? Well, I was nine when I started smoking cigars. I was 15 when I started rolling them and making blends. And those blends, oh, oh. That's okay, we, uh, there's not gonna be any editing because I'm generally no, lazy and cursing is allowed, it, by it the way. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm, I'm totally good with that, hey. um, editing, I love that. 
Uh, so yeah, and then uh, started making blends, and then my blends uh, became very good sellers in the cigar shops that were. I would, it was like these two little. It wasn't even a cigar shop. It was like a little cigar factory, and then it had uh, like a little counter at the front uh, thing they sold the cigars at. And since they didn't even know my name when I was, they started teaching me how to roll cigars and stuff. They just called me White Boy, and then they had a little sign where they sold my cigars as White Boy Cigars. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most honest marketing you could possibly have. Like it's not like it's not really, you know, I'm from the South Side of Chicago. I get that a lot. Um, and then, so you're you're in your early 30s now. So it's early been, 30s. So it's been about 100,000 years it's, old. It's Come been on. a natural progression. Well, that's again a lot of Chicago humor this weekend. It's, it's 30 plus interest. That's cool. Yeah. Um, like 10 percent on top of that. When did you realize that there was so much more to it as far as the blends? Like we said, like people say, like oh they smell, they're this, like. At what point did that indulgence become more for you? Um, like the enjoyment of the art and like blending and oh, everything. Oh, like did I get more enjoyment out of annoying people? <laughs> what have you? Yeah, what have you? Yeah. Yeah. It's smelly, you know? Yeah. No, I mean like, sure. Um, sometimes people like smelly stuff. I had a girlfriend uh, who was a famous model and she loved it when I used to sweat all the time and not change my t-shirt and then she put my sweaty disgusting t-shirt I couldn't even stand on her pillowcase and that's it's called like, that's called mantastic oh demand oh, yeah they love cool. that shit for sure yeah what would you tell people <laughs> at this point now it's 2019 young people like the, like I said the stigma for Millennials like the younger generation it is gradually changing uh, we've got there's younger guys in the Alec Bradley booth Alec and Bradley um, again yourself okay fine early 40s um, <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna ride Happy this birthday. I'm gonna ride this train. He's really hard. just embarrassed of wanting to date an older guy. That's all. I'm not embarrassed. I'm pretty chill about it. Oh, really? That's great. <laughs> I'm gonna fall over the couch. Yeah, ironically I know. enough, that's where I'll like, get you I'm, at your best. <laughs> not until I'm done with that orthopedic surgeon, unfortunately. Okay. Not, until have, not until I have the dead. Now person. I'm getting jealous. You got an orthopedic surgeon on the side. Come no, on. Well, not until I get the dead person inside me. And by that, oh that's the ligament. Um, what would you tell somebody? Hey, like, give it a world try something new, what would be your logic behind that? Well, listen, you know, every everything, you don't have to try everything new. If you feel like something, you want to have something a little extra special in your life, then you're going to smoke a good cigar. What else is there to smoke except Lars Deaton's? No, I can't think of anything. Yeah, nice. yeah I no, can't think of anything else. No, perfect. Yeah. It's like it's bulletproof yeah. logic, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why. That, that's that's why you sell. You, that's why you tell people. Like, I live, I moved to Chicago for the great deals. You can get a a, par a parking rate on Groupon. That's actually why I stopped seeing women in in in, uh, in Lakeview because it's like. It's not that I couldn't afford to take them on a date. It's that I couldn't afford the parking rate in the box. <laughs> That's so true, too. It sucks. And, and uh, actually, Chicago, you can get a very inexpensive place. That they have these like little towers that are right next to Lake Michigan or whatever it's called. Oh, and, uh, yeah, Lake Point Towers. Yeah, and, uh, yeah it, very it, inexpensive. If you just happen to have yeah. like a quarter of a million like laying around, you can do that. <laughs> I thought you were going to say like you can find somewhere really affordable on Lower Wacker Drive. That's a long, terrible I think terrible it's a story. quarter million a month there. That's true, yeah. It's, <laughs> Like, like doing the math, this is about eighteen grand per per breath. Yeah, um, you got some new stuff. Yeah, um, what's going on blend wise? Uh, whether it's, it's season wise, it's actually classic. Everything I'm really making now is pretty cl the classic Lars Teton stuff. Even the people that have been smoking it, they're like, whoa, this brings me back to the '80s. You know, when when I first started smoking Lars Teton cigars. Uh, People who have smoked my cigars through the 80s and 90s will taste this and think, wow, this is the original shit. And it really is. You know, it, we really went about this in a way where we made it exact. I was down there in Nicaragua with my team and we made this shit happen. And I did not leave until I had them really, had everybody had it down. And then I went back again, more quality control, more disciplined, you know, training them so they everybody had the system and protocol set up. It became a very well-oiled machine. Let's put it that way. Dotting your T's and crossing your eyes. Oh yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Um, and I mean, and again, I'm going to ride the train a little bit harder. I was oh, born. Happy I, birthday. I was born in '87. Oh, wow. sorry. I like that. Yeah, that's, you wait till you get your ARP in the mail. Oh, that's yeah. when you know the time has come. That's a lot of um, sexy. Lars, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank We're going to wind this on down. Hopefully, we got a little bit more on the road. 2019's IPCPR with Alec Bradley, Lars Tetons. Keep it sexy, children. Phenomenal stuff. Take care. Stay styled. <laughs>